Hello, my name is Michael Staterman. I'm here today to tell you about a novel desalination technology that we've developed here at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory that we call flow through electrode capacitive desalination. Water is the oil of the 21st century. It's a, co a commodity that is becoming more and more scarce and that is necessary for all of us to survive. About a sixth of the world's population currently does not have daily access to potable water. Now traditionally, uh, droughts and lack of water were a third world problem and didn't concern us much in the U.S., but the droughts of this year have driven home that this is a problem that concerns us just as much as everybody else. A stable source of potable water is required um, to go forward in the next decade. The global market for desalination right now is $10 billion per year and expected to double within the next five years. This is due to increased demand because of changing weather patterns, as well as a reduction in cost due to improvements on desalination technology that makes desalination an attractive op uh, alternative to other technologies that are being used. Let me begin with introducing capacity desalination as a technology. Capacity desalination removes water, uh, ions from water like a sponge, a selective sponge. And traditionally, we have a salt stream between two electrodes. The ions are sucked up as you apply a bias to the electrode and um, move in response to this field. Now, after the ions are all removed from the stream in the middle, we can rinse out this desalinated stream with more salt water and we regenerate the electrode. This is necessary. We have now a fully soaked up sponge and we have to um, get the ions out of the sponge again. And this can be simply done by releasing the bias. Okay. The stream that we have now between the electrodes is called brine. It is enriched, um, has about twice the concentration of what we initially fed in. And we can remove, depending on the salt concentration of the feed stream, either all of the salt or just some of the salt. The energy that we use to charge up the cell is stored on, to, on the electrodes as a capacitor. So almost all of it can be recovered, which makes this a very attractive method for desalinating water. Our technology now improves on this original design by changing how we utilize the electrode volume. Instead of the traditional flow between architecture that is shown on the left, where we have two electrodes that bracket the stream that is being desalinated, we are utilizing the electrodes as a whole to flow water through. And um, this gives us the ability to both use less energy per ion moved uh, and um, improves the amount of salt that we can remove at a single charging step. It also improves the speed or the desalination rate of the method. In the left case, the ions have to move a long distance, about up to one millimeter, before the desalination is complete. In the right case, um, it only, they only have to move a couple of microns, so the desalination is up to 20 times faster. Now, you might ask, why doesn't everybody use this flow-through electrode geometry if that is so much superior to the traditional geometry? Well, the simple answer to that is, is that normal aerogel or normal electrode materials that are used in capacity desalination are filled with small pores that, have, that require a large pressure to drive water through. So this technology isn't very attractive. We have developed a novel carbon aerogel material at Livermore that has large pores and small pores and it's called a hierarchical material. We have one through f one, uh, large pores that are one through five uh, microns in diameter that you can see on the left side on this uh, SEM image. And these pores reduce the hydraulic resistance of the material and allow us to flow through the material very easily. We also have small pores on the order of one to two nanometer size that provide large air surface area and give the electrode the capacitance that it needs to remove large amounts of salt. This is a robust material that can be post-treated or oxidized, and it is cheap compared to other materials that are available. We have assembled this material in a test cell that is fairly small, about 0.4 milliliters. We find that the projected performance can be achieved with this device. We have also discovered that some technical challenges remain. For example, extracting the desalinated water from these cells. Right now, we're experiencing, experiencing mixing as the water, um, the desalinated water gets pushed out with uh, salt water, and this leads to performance reduction, and that's the problem that we have to address before this technology can move further. The main competitor of our technology is reverse osmosis. 
Reverse osmosis, instead of removing salt from the water, removes water from the salt. Um, the salt water that you see on the left of the cells pushed through a selective membrane and um, you get fresh water on the left side and you get a higher concentrated salt stream on the right side. The technology is very mature and energy efficient. Uh, to highlight how we expect our flow through electrode capacity desalination to be able to compete with reverse osmosis in the future, I'm showing this plot here on uh, the left, um, where we show all existing technologies as both a function of their energy requirements and their infrastructure requirements. The reverse osmosis technology requires a small amount of energy, but a very substantial amount of infrastructure. Capacity desalination, on the other hand, requires a fairly small uh, amount of infrastructure, but currently a very large amount of energy. We expect to be able to reduce the amount of energy with our new um, technology that CD requires to desalinate water and become competitive reverse osmosis on that axis. And since infrastructure cost is about one third of the total cost of desalinated water, we then expect our future CD performance to be able to outcompete reverse osmosis. Beyond the infrastructure and energy uh, advantages, there are several other advantages that reverse osmosis, uh, that capacity ionization has over reverse osmosis. One, the major one of them being that um, we can scale the technology very easily with size without giving up any kind of efficiency. So reverse osmosis requires fairly large pressures and that means you require fairly large pumps and fairly large uh, energy recovery devices to efficiently recover the energy that you put in. FTECD, on the other hand, um, can be fed with gravity, so it doesn't require very high pressure. And the energy recovery is done with solid state electronics, which are both cheap and small. Finally, as already mentioned, the electrode that we're using for FTECD is very robust compared to a fragile desalination membrane. So the amount of water that you can get out of each liter of seawater is limited in reverse osmosis because you are actually increasing the concentration of the brine of, uh, of the water that you're trying to desalinate as you're doing the desalination because you're removing the water. For flow through electrode capacity ionization, we're removing the salt. And so we can easily scale to any kind of um, salinity and we can remove or we can achieve higher recovery rates. Now let's switch to applications. Beyond creating potable water out of seawater, there are a variety of other applications that flow through electrode um, capacity ionization would be interesting for. First and foremost of these is uh, the treatment of produced water from coal bed methane or fracking processes. This water is of very high salinity um, and currently is not treated because there's no technology available to do so. The water is instead uh, discarded. Um, what the industry is looking for in this case is a method that can remove a part of the salt rather than all of it, um, reduce concentration from 100 grams per liter to 30 grams per liter, and our application does that and is, to our knowledge, the only application that does so. Uh, second uh, application is brackish water desalination. This is a field where we expect um, capacity desalination to be much um, earlier competitive reverse, with reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis is the state of the art for this application. Um, and due to our higher recovery rate, we think we can apply FTECD in inland desalination uh, facilities uh, where currently the large amount of brine produced by reverse osmosis is uh, preventing a cost-effective use of reverse osmosis. As mentioned before, our devices scale very e easily and we should be able to create energy-efficient portable desalination applications that can be either used by the military or humanitarian um, organizations. Uh, and finally, since we scale so well, we can also be used in the household to either desalinate um, salty wells or uh, to reduce water hardness. To summarize, the individual components of our technology have been demonstrated. Our next step will consist of integrating all of our components in a 10 milliliter per hour benchtop device um, to show that everything works together and that we can, and then we can troubleshoot and optimize the device performance. And the next step up from there will be a 10 liter per hour scale up. And after, we, after this one, we expect the uh, technology to be ready for producing production of larger scale plants uh, and devices.
This concludes my talk. If you have more questions, please contact Leah Rogers and the Industrial Partnership Office. Thank you.